Hello, welcome to the Second Chance Platform with Blessing and thank you for joining me in today's episode. Today's episode is actually a Bible study. It's just a short part of the Bible, um, of scripture we're going to take today. We are looking at Ephesians chapter 2 and we're going to read verse 1 to 10. My emphasis is going to be on verse 5, verse 8 and to 10. So before we start, let's pray and ask the Holy Ghost to help us tonight as we study his word. Our Father, we thank you. Holy Ghost, we thank you for your word as we study. Help us, give us, give us understanding of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. So I'm going to read an um, NIV version. I know, um, so it's going to, um, Ephesians 2, chapter 1, uh, chapter 2, sorry, verse 1 says, As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the way of the sword and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air and the spirit who is now at the work in those who are disobedient now the second just platform is about what real life issues where we talk about real life issues second chance people will say oh what do you mean by second chance what the scripture is about to tell us is god gives you many chances it says, as for you were dead in transgressions and sins, in which you used to live and follow the way of the Lord, and the ruler of the kingdom of the air, and the spirit who is now at the work at work in those who are disobedient. Verse 3 says, All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the craving of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of rot but because of his great love for us god who is rich in mercy that's why i said made us alive with christ even when we were dead in transgression it is by grace you are saved so what is the scripture trying to say that at some point in our life the bible says that you are sinner from your mother's womb as long as you've not given your life to christ you are a a sinner you're considered a sin because you were the old adam jesus is the new adam so the scripture is telling us here that and that's what the second chance platform is about it's making us understand that there's a time in our life where we were all sinners and so tonight i want to draw out something from the scripture you are not born again to judge others you are born again to also make others speak the gospel of the salvation to others so they can be also born again because remember there was a time in your life, even if you were born in church, does not automatically make you a believer. That does not automatically mean that you have given your life to Christ. You have to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you have to call him into your life as your master. Renounce the old Adam and put on the new Adam. That's what giving your life to Christ is about. So even if you were born inside the church, your parents were pastors, not until you have confessed with your own mouth and believed with your heart, you are not yet a believer. You are not yet born again. You are not yet a child of God. Do you understand? So, But one of the things I want you to understand here is the love of Christ. God loves us so much that even while we are in sin, he he does not hate us. But that does not mean he wants us to continue in sin. That's why he said, why we were yet sinners. He was, he died. Christ died for us. Christ died for us. Christ died for our sin. So now let me put this, this analogy. It will help us understand what we're trying to say. Now, when you have your earthly parents, your biological parents, they love you so much, right? you misbehave and you leave the house like the prodigal son and go away does that mean they stop loving you no they are hurt yes but they still love you now the part that i want you to pick out is when you go astray and they say things that would harm you and they have liberty or they have the capacity to be able to prevent such harm from your life will they because of that you've gone away, you've gone to, to, to the word, and they will not say, okay, we are not gonna, we are gonna allow whatever that wants to happen to you, happen to you. No, they don't do that. Now, if your earthly parents will not allow harm comes to you, even when you make them angry, hurts them, how do you think your heavenly father is? Now, I, 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 I always use this analogy to understand that the love of Christ in us is something that 
we did not work for it we did not merit it but christ but christ sorry about the noise but christ gave us this love and what he did with the love he gave to us is gave it to us at his own free will so the love of christ is free is a free gift that has been given to us all we need to do to get hold of the love of christ is to accept him as our lord and savior and to love him back and one of the beautiful thing about god that i've realized over my over my personal life is that god gives us time god is a very patient god god is a very patient god is he tries as much as possible not he doesn't force himself on us he gives us time even while we are in the world god makes sure that even while we are in the world, he still find a way to protect us. He find a way to begin to relate to us, to make us understand that come back home, son, come back home, daughter. So the scripture is saying in verse 5, let me read from verse 5 down to 10. It will give you a better understanding of what the love of Christ is. That God is not seeking for you to be perfect to come to him. And even while you're in him, God is not asking you to be perfect. What he's asking is, can you ask for my grace? Can you help? Can you say, can you rely on my grace to help you? I know you're weak. I know your weakness. I know where you are. At. I am the one that can help you and be a better person. I'm the one that can help you overcome that weakness. That's what God is saying. So I'll read from verse 5 down to 10. So it will give us a better understanding. Jesus, okay. Verse 5 says, made us alive with Christ even while we were dead in transgressions. Because when you, it, this, 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 the nature of sin makes you dead. You are not alive. You are dead in Christ. You are not, sorry, you are dead in sin. So the nature of sin makes you dead. But when you give your life to Christ and make Jesus your Lord, you become alive to Christ. He said, even while we're dead in transgression, it is by grace you have been saved. You have been saved. So God is speaking to those of us that it is grace that made you saved. So when you're in Christ and you're trying to do it by yourself, excuse me, remember it is not by your righteousness that made you saved. It is grace that made you saved. So if it's grace that made you saved, can you rely on that grace to help you through the journey of your journey with Christ? Then verse 6 says, And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realm in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming age he might show the incorruptible riches of his glory, expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. Verse 8 said, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from, your, from, from yourselves, it is the gift of God. So salvation is a gift, the love of God is a gift. It is not by your works. It's not by really, you know, a lot of times I've noticed that religion has come into play. So a lot of people play religion. If I do it this way, if I pray 10 times a day, I'm not saying it's wrong to pray 10 times a day. If I pray 50 times a day, that will make me righteous. No, the Bible says in context, I read the Bible in context and I encourage everyone to read word for word what the word of God is saying. It said, for by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not for yourself. It is a gift of God. The, the salvation is a gift. You are saved by grace, not by your works, not by what you have done, not by how religious you are, not by how many times you go to church. It is encouraged. The Lord encourages us to not neglect the gathering of the brethren. Yes, but neglecting the gathering of the brethren in spirit and in truth, not by religion, that I must go to church 10 times a day or pray 20 times a day. That was makes me saved. No, what makes you saved is by grace. What makes you saved is accepting and loving the Jesus that has loved you first and accepting the grace and the message of salvation. That's what makes you saved because it is not by your works. It is by grace. He said, not by works so that no one can boast. You can't boast that you save yourself. It is not your works that save you. This is what the scripture is telling us. Your works cannot save you. Your praying hundred times a day cannot save you. Your doing the, um, the, 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 the doctrines of the church cannot save you. Being a, an elder, a pastor, a deacon or whatever, doing work in church does not save you. What save you is the grace of God that save you. Do you understand? Not by works so that no one could boast for we are God's hand work. Created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So you are being saved. You are being prepared. 
So I, 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 I say this things. I, if I can lay my hand on the scriptures and I would have shared it with you, but if not on the next Bible study, I will let you know. Your save, your, your being saved is predestinated because God has what prepared it in advance for us. So when you are being saved or you see someone out there that is not saved, you're like, mm, my life is better. Your life is not better. Your life is only better because grace found you. That would have been you on that street. That would have been you, you know, being drugged or, you know, being a drug addict, a prostitute or a chief or whatever. But why you're not there is because grace found you and grace saved you. So you are saved by grace which God prepared in advance for where? So God has prepared you. What, what it means that prepared in advance? It means that before Christ, found, before grace found you, you have been predestinated to be among those that will be saved. That's why the scripture encourages us that when we are saved, you go out and save others. Because there are a lot of people, he said it's not of him that, that, that any should perish. It's not of him that any should perish, but that all should come to the knowledge of Christ. And remember, the scripture says that it's not of him that will it, nor of him that run it. It's of the Lord that showeth mercy. So it's the mercies of God that we are not consumed. So I don't know what you have been through. I don't know what you have done that you are thinking, oh, I am condemned by God. God does not condemn his own. He doesn't condemn. Maybe you've given your life to Christ before. Maybe at some point you pulled back. Or maybe you don't even know Jesus. You feel like you are too filthy to come around. Uh, you don't want, you, you, Jesus cannot accept you because you are filthy. It's not true. He said, it is by grace we are saved. Not by our works. It's not by how clean you are. His blood has made you clean. So I want to encourage you today that if you are one among this category, just embrace the grace of God. Embrace the love that God has shed abroad in our heart. The grace, the love of God that God has given to us. He has loved you. He said he first loved you. So even while you were in the world, he has already loved you. Even in the world, all he asks is come home. Like the prodigal son, you know, come home. The, 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 let me just explain this. Prodigal son is like the, the old Adam and the new Adam. Like, the, I, I will say this, the old Adam came, that's how we were born as an old Adam. You come into this world, you don't know Christ, you're born into with the old Adam. And you find a way, you know, grace found you, you give your life to Christ. That's the return of the prodigal son, he comes back to. And what did, what did God do? When the prodigal son came back to his father, did you see the father, you know, asking him, where did you go to, where have you been, why have you not returned all these years? No! And that's God for you. He did not say that to him. Rather, what did he do? He ran to embrace him. All God is asking for you this minute is come back home. And his arms are open to receive you. He will run to embrace you. And what did he do to him? He cleaned him up. He, he put a, finger, um, a ring on his finger. He wore him the best robe. Do you understand? Because he was happy for him to come home. He ran and went to embrace him. And there was even a party. The Bible says that there is joy in heaven over one soul saved. That's how important your soul is. It is Remember, Ephesians 2 and verse 1 to 10 said, It is not by our works that we are saved. It is by grace that we are saved. And the scriptures say, It is by his mercies that we are not consumed. And if there's nothing you will remember to do, remember this word. The word of God says that, that it is not of him that will it. So it's not by your righteousness. It's not by your, your works. It is not of him that will it, nor of him that run it. It's of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. It is of the Lord, you know, that we are not consumed. It's not of him that will it, nor of him that run it. It's, it's the Lord. It's his grace. We talk about grace. It's talking about his mercy. It's talking about his grace. So I don't know where you are in your journey. Maybe you've journeyed with Christ at some point. You felt that, you know, the circumstances and challenges of life pulled you back. And you're like, no, I can't do this anymore. You've gone back to the world. You have done things that you're not proud of. You're asking yourself, no, God, I am filthy. I can't go back to you because right now I don't trust. I don't, I don't, I, I can't even stand your presence. God is saying, no, like the prodigal son, come back home. 
is telling your daughter, come back home. Even if you're a drug addict, even if you're a prostitute, even if you're a thief or a murderer, if God does not see your sins, what he sees, every time you appear before him, all he sees is the blood, the blood of Jesus that washed you clean. So he's asking you to come back home. He's asking you to, to come back home like the prodigal son is going to accept you. He's going to clean you up. Allow God to walk through you. Allow God to clean you up. That's all he's asking for you. That's all he's asking from you. So, and that's what the second chance platform is about. It's about second chances. What does second chance mean? Second chance means that you have failed in life. You have done something that you're not proud of. There are things, there are parts you have in you. Some parts you've taken in life and you don't even understand what it is. You are saying that you are, the end does not look good. And you're wondering, I can't go back. God cannot take me back. No, God gives you, offer you second chances. So you're dealing with some sort of, you know, habits. You're dealing with some some sort of um, weakness that you're unable to come out from. You're a believer. You're still dealing with fornication. You're still dealing with, with all sorts of things. You're dealing with, 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 with weaknesses that you cannot even share. Maybe, you know, God is saying, come back. I have second chances. I have sec with God, you have second chances. All he's asking you today is don't rely on your strength. Rely on my grace. He said, my grace is sufficient for you. Rely on God's grace to, to navigate this, you know, this journey of your life. To navigate this part of your life so that you can stand out tomorrow and say, I was once there and today I'm here. I remember when I was dealing so much with unforgiveness and pain because of the hurt I had in childhood hurts childhood traumas, abuse that I went through, series of abuse. You know, I said it in my previous videos. If you go to some of the episodes, you'll see when I, I talked about it. it was a pain that could not leave. And because of that, I was, I thought, you know, you know, you know, you know, dwelling in this pain will make me better until the Holy Ghost helped me understood that let go and let me in. And this time I was a believer, you know, burning for God, you know, preaching about Jesus to, to the word and all that. But I was in pain. I could not let go of those, those abuse, those hurts and those pain until the Holy Ghost said to me, let go and let me in. And that was the word. He said, let go, let me in. Let go and let me in. So the Holy Ghost is telling you today the same thing. Let go and let him in. Let go of that hurt. Let go of that pain. Let go of that filthiness. Let him in and he's going to clean you up like the prodigal son, like the father did to the prodigal son. Let Jesus clean you up today. So if you are in that show, or maybe you're here, you've not given your life to Christ. I want to pray for you that the Lord will help you. Whatever that you're going through, Jesus will sort you out in the name of Jesus. Be it addiction, be it frustration, be it you've gone to the wrong path and you don't know how to get your way back. I speak grace into your life in the name of Jesus. Let Jesus sort you out. By the blood of Jesus and in the torrent in the name of Jesus, I break the hold of Satan over your life. In the name of Jesus, I speak peace into your spirit. I speak peace into your mind. I speak peace into your body. In the name of Jesus, I speak peace into your emotions. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you today. In any way you have, you have gone astray and you are trusting God to come back, or you don't even know how to come back, I ask that the Holy Ghost will help you. The grace of God will find you in the name of Jesus and pull you back to him. The grace to overcome is released upon you today. In Jesus' name we pray. And if you are here, you've not, you don't know Jesus, I pray for you today. And say this word with me and say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today as my Lord and Savior. Forgive me my sins and be my personal Lord and Savior in Jesus' name. If you say those words, I pray that the Lord will give you grace to continue in his path. You will not go astray. You will not fall. You will not falter. The grace and the message of God will speak over you. In Jesus' name, amen. It's that simple to give your life to Christ. It's not hard. All you need to do is just say those few words I said earlier. And boom, you are now a child of God. And if you said those words, please look for any Bible-believing church around you. And maybe you're aware you cannot um, have access to church. Please, as long, as long as you have access to the internet, please go on Google and search for the Bible. And begin to read up on, you know, on the Word of God. And the Lord, the Holy Ghost will help you, you know, 
to 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 understand what you're reading you can search some of the new new convert messages on youtube there are a lot of beautiful stuff there you can use please use that and you know and begin to listen to the word of god and god will help you through it in jesus name amen so thank you for joining me today i hope to see you next week on this same time remember god loves you and jesus is still proud of who you are god bless you and have a lovely weekend. Bye for now.